Baruch Hashem Yabba Hashem Yehoshua. Baruch Hashem Yehoshua. Shalom, family. The title of today's lesson is called The Search. And in this lesson, we're going to kind of break down the mindset and the frame of spirit we need to have in order to have a successful relationship with Yah. Um, so we can have peace, um, healing, uh, you know, that be of our situation, of our bodies, whatever, because... You know, when, when Yah fixes the situation, there's a type of healing that goes on. And it doesn't always involve your body, but you have to understand if you want that peace and to optimize, okay, your relationship with Yah, um, you have to think and move a certain way. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Um, and we're going to be coming out of Second Chronicles, okay, 16th chapter, um, covering uh, some of the reign of King Asa and some specific things that happen here that we need to examine okay so we'll start with second chronicle 16 which reads verse 1 in the 36th year of the reign of Asah, baasha the sovereign of israel came up against yehuda and built rama to prevent anyone going out or coming in to asa sovereign of yehuda and asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of yehuda and of the sovereign's house, and sent to Ben Hadad, sovereign of Aram, who dwelt to Masek, saying, Let there be a covenant between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your covenant with Basha, sovereign of Israel, so that he withdraws from me. And Ben Hadad listened to sovereign Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel, and they smote Yon and Dan and Abal Maim. And all the storage cities of Natali. Okay. So it seems that um, Israel and Judah were uh, going at it. Okay. And uh, the sovereign of Israel, Shabasha, came up against Yehuda. And he built a city. He was trying to uh, basically build a fortification or some kind of blocking blockage. And that was one of the war strategies. Um uh, which still exists today, you know, stopping supplies or whatnot, so that no one can go, in, go out and come in. And in a minute, they'll kind of run out of food and things they need. Um, and then they'll have to surrender or be in a weakened state, whatever, you know. Um, so, Asa, I guess he thought he was being clever, seemed to have worked. He went and got treasuries from the house of Yahuwah, <laughs> uh, paid... Um, the sovereign of Aram, okay, Ben Hadad, I believe the first, and um, in order to get some help from from the outside, so he enlisted a foreigner to help, using treasures from the house of Yahuwah, and it seemed to have worked, but there was a problem here because um, Yahuwah wants you to trust Him, okay, and you know not take the blessings He gave you. Give them to somebody else so they can help you. To come to Yah himself. Ask for help, expect help, believe that he will help you. And we'll get into this because the importance of, you know, what is Yah looking at? Um, how is he kind of judging our moves? Okay. Because things come in our lives and you just think, man, this is bad time. It's a bad situation. Oh, you know, the devil is doing this, that, and the third. Like I said, the devil's doing what he's allowed to do or sent to do or told to do. And when things come up, we have to look at them the right way. All right? Yah is using this. He's doing it for some reason. Okay? If you're serving him and praying to him for guidance every day and wanting to please him, then when things come up that don't appear to be favorable, okay, uh, just understand Yah, the one, he's the one who did it. Okay, now... Let's look at this. Why did Yah bring <laughs> Baasha ba up against Asa, right? Um, because King Asa was, was was actually, if you go back to, I believe, Second Chronicles 15, he was, uh, you know, tearing down, you know, groves. And he was against idolatry. He even said his mom, right, who his mom, his mother, um, was building idols and trying to worship idols. And he tore all that down and, and, and you know, took her out of being the queen or, you know, his mother, the position she had in the land. He basically removed her from that position. And then, you know, ground the idols to powder and threw them in the river and things like that. So he was against 
idolatry. Um, and, you know, it looked like he was doing pretty good as far as his relationship with Yah. But, you know, <laughs> Yah's always going to put that test out there to make sure that you continue to walk in those ways and, and trust him as, as you should. OK, and we're going to kind of get into the importance of doing that. All right. So let's let's keep going. Uh, Second Chronicles uh, verse five. And it came to be when Baasha heard it, he stopped building Rama and ceased his work. And the side of Sodom brought all Yehuda, and they took away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Baasha had used for building, and with them he built Gibba and Mizpah. So, uh, you know, king of Israel stopped building that city because uh, he being attacked now <laughs> by Ben Hadad. And, uh, you know, they used to come out and they took all the wood and the, you know, supplies they were using to build that city, and they built two other cities of their own. Okay, so it looks like it, it worked. Wow, you know, we did it. I, I didn't have to go to Yah. I just uh, I took some blessings he gave me and I used it to get some help from somebody else. Uh, didn't ask him and didn't inquire of him. I didn't trust him. I just, uh, you know, went and put my trust in someone else. And this is a problem a lot of times. We try to fix a situation that Yah set up uh, with, 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 with some other um, earthly means or some means outside of Yah himself. And if Yah's the one creates the situation, he's the one to fix it. All right. That that has to be very important in the forefront of your mind. That when these situations come up on us, things happen that seem to be a roadblock or a problem or somebody warring against us. And it happens in different ways. Right. Well, you, you don't just your knee jerk reaction to enlist the help of some earthly, uh, you know, entity or some person, some someone you know, outside of just sitting there and praying. Because a lot of times you just have to pray and do nothing but believe. Okay. And then the situation will fix itself because you is the one going to fix it because you are trusting in him, which is the whole point of the exercise anyway. So if you are in one of these situations right now, whatever that is, uh, stop a minute. Just stop. Did you pray about it? Did you pray about what was your mind made up already? Or did you pray about it and say, Yah, if it be your will, or Yah, I need you to come in and fix this? And I'm just going to wait on you to do it. Now, will he will he have you use other people sometime? Yeah. Have you use, um, you know, some kind of earthly means? Yeah, but let him set it up and tell you what to do. And believe me, he'll drop it right in your lap. I mean, it's not a situation where you're going to have to do a whole lot of searching and trying to figure this out. You pray and wait, okay? And he'll give you guidance on what to do. You know, yeah, I might have even told him, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, hire uh, Ben Haddad. But see, he didn't ask y'all. He didn't trust him. He just said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I got to get it fixed. Now, nah, they're building this city. We're going to be starved out in a minute. We need help. You know, you look at the situation, it, look, it looks dire. It looks like you have to act fast. And see, that's one thing that the devil wants you to do. Act fast. Don't, don't think. Don't pray. Don't wait. You got to do something. You have to do it now. That urgency, you know, uh, so the devil tries to do scare you into doing something now or this and that and the third going to happen. OK, and all we have to do is pray, believe and wait on you to do what he promised, which is deliver us, which is fix it, which is come through. All right. So we did all this and it looked like it, it works. OK, I, you know, we, we did it. We win. Okay, so let's look at verse 7. And at that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, sovereign Yehuda, and said to him, Because you have relied on the sovereign of Aram and have not relied on Yahuwah, your Elohim, therefore the army of the sovereign of Aram has escaped from your hand. Okay, because these are enemies to Israel, you know, and to, to Judah. All right? Regardless of whether or not you're making pacts with them, you know, no one should be doing that. But um, you got to understand, you, it should be you and Yah. You know, that's it. Um, you don't need to make pacts and covenants and stuff with, with people um, to get stuff done. Because people do it today. It's in different ways. You know, but they get people all involved in their business. You know, you know, I need help over here. I need help over there. And it minds up backfiring on them. Or, you know, it doesn't work out. Or people know too much about your business. Use it against you. Whatever. So many ways it can, it can go down. Um but if you trust Yah, you avoid all that. Okay, you get a nice, clean, permanent, 
you know, unchangeable solution. Okay, but it said, hey, you didn't rely on them. Let's keep going. Look, look what y'all going to say. That's why I say it's very important to remember what he's done for you. Because he's done so many things for us in the past. And then you kind of say, well, that was the past. So let's not think about it. That's over now. This ain't the same thing. Um, regardless of how it looks, it's the same script, different day, different cast, whatever. You still have to do the same thing. I'm going to trust y'all again. And it should be easier this time because he's already done it before. So look at verse 8. With the Kushites, Kushites and the Lebim, not a mighty army, with very many chariots and horsemen. And because you relied on Yahuwah, he gave them into your hand. So there is something there. <laughs> yeah, has already done for us. I am saying, listen, look what I did for you already. Kushites, I, I gave them into your hand. It was a mighty army. The beam. So let's not act like, you know, I wasn't there for you. And just because this is a different, <laughs> actually your own people coming up against you. Um, you have to understand, I'm still there. You have to rely on me. Like you did in the past. Now let's look at verse 9. And this is where the title of this lesson comes from. For the eyes of you who will diligently search throughout all the earth. To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect to him. You have acted foolishly in this. So from now on you shall have battles. What? No peace now. No peace. No peace because you didn't trust. We don't want to be in that situation. Somebody trying to take your peace from you. And you didn't trust in Yah, and you did it some other way without praying or waiting or fasting or whatever you needed to do. Uh, looked like you might have fixed it. Didn't trust Yah at all for it. But now Yah saying you're not going to have any peace now. From now on, you're going to have battles. And that's just, you know, can be symbolic and represented as having no peace. It's always going to be somebody coming up against you now. Well, I could have fixed that where it wouldn't be the case. See, things are tests for us. They're tests these challenges and things that come up and we're, you know, and it may be, seem the most impossible thing in the world to do nothing. But, you know, if you're praying and believing, trusting Yah, actually you're not doing nothing. You know, you're actually doing uh, some very powerful, um, you're taking some very powerful action because you are praying to Yah and believing he's going to fix it and just waiting on the solution to present itself or manifest itself, right? So, Yah is searching right now. And see, he will create the situation to see if your heart is going to be perfect toward him. Are you going to trust me? Are you going to? And you can be doing great. But, you know, the devil talking a little bit too loudly. Maybe you haven't been reading like you should or praying like you should. And you get that fear going in you. Then you might make a, a, a knee-jerk reaction or a rash decision, and you mess up. I mean, Yah was trying to uh, continue to come through for you, and continue to help you grow and and, and be what He'd have you to be. Okay, you're delaying it. Um, you're throwing a wrench in it yourself, because all you had to do is pray and wait. Okay, um, and if you don't, it says you're acting foolishly. So if you don't pray and wait on Yah, you're acting foolishly. It's a foolish thing not to pray and wait on Yah. If you just do it, if you try to fix it, if you have a knee-jerk reaction to something without consoling Yah at all, there shouldn't be a day that goes by in your life you're not thanking Yah, asking Him for His guidance and help and protection, okay, and to lead and guide you in that day. Can't, that's something you just can't skip doing. Okay? That is very, very important. And if you don't, then, you know, something will come up that Yah himself put there. See, <laughs> that's what we have to understand. That these circumstances come upon us because Yah is trying to see what we would do. All right? Um, so he's looking to show himself strong. He wants to come through. He wants to show up and do things that no man could do. Something that seems impossible that there's no way out. That's the best situation where it seems like there's no way. You don't know how in the world you're going to do this. Everybody else failed. They'll try to go that route or whatever. You try to believe, well, it's already done. Let me pray and fast if I'm led to. Uh, just believe it and just going to go to sleep and not lose uh, a minute of sleep. 
over a situation that is not yours to control and you didn't even create it. Okay? Yah will bring somebody against you. He will because he want to deal with them people anyway. Okay? Um, he will create a situation that doesn't seem like there's any way out. And the devil come telling you all kinds of crazy stuff to do. Go take your car and get this loan or whatever. All kinds of crazy stuff. All you got to say, you know what? I know you're going to do this, y'all. I, I don't know how because I don't have to. It's not. He didn't tell you you're supposed to know how. He says his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. How are you going to know how? <laughs> he said just believe it. You don't have to know what he's going to do. You just got to know he's going to do it. And it can be as general as that. General statement. I know you're going to fix this, I'll be y'all. And I trust you and I thank you. And then that's it. When you think about it, just pray about it. That's it. All right? And then, you know, Asa got mad. This is stupid right here. He, he was wroth with the seer and put him in prison. This is verse 10. He was enraged with him because of this. So he mad because he was stupid. He mad because he was a fool. And uh, the seer told him this. Then he impressed some people. He just uh, went off on the deep end. You see how that little spirit of, 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 of fear get in and all kinds of crazy stuff of uh, uh, jump off. He, he, he didn't have the right frame of spirit. He wasn't thinking the right way. He thought he did something great. And the seer said, man, you're going to have battles now because you didn't trust y'all. Your peace going to be taken. <laughs> he throws them in jail and then start pressing people. Going to get angry about it. So you don't want to be in that, on the side of that, on that side of the coin. That you, you know, trusting the man and not consulting y'all. Because then, you know, look how the devil try to get in with other stuff. Sneak in through that crack. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, I'm going to uh, go to verse 12 okay because <laughs> y'all brought something else in time Some time had passed uh, it says here in the 39th year of his reign Asa became diseased in his feet now I don't know if it's diabetes I don't know what it was so something happened and his disease was severe look at this yet even in his disease he did not seek Yahuwah now you know let's, let's look back to verse 10 though how could he how could he? You know, when the seer come to tell you, you're supposed to trust in y'all, you throw him in jail. You probably feel like, man, I, I ain't got no no right or biz to even try to trust in, in y'all now. So you don't want to be in that spot, right? I didn't trust y'all. This whole thing is destroyed and messed up. And then something else come up. And then you be thinking, man, you know, the devil like, hey, he ain't going to hear you. You should have trusted the first time. You can forget it. He, ain't, he might as well not even try. You know, he'll come in and try to just block that too. For whatever reason, y'all just said, you know, uh, Asa didn't didn't trust again. He didn't even seek y'all. Just say, please help me, have mercy on me, and I, I I believe you can do this. No, he didn't. What he do? He trusts the physicians. <laughs> he trusts the physicians, and these physicians, boy, you know, hey, especially nowadays, they they, they taking so many people out who trusting in them. Um, you better you better trust y'all and him only. Because they, they, I don't see now they, these doctors and stuff, they'll do anything for a paycheck. Okay. Um, so what happens? Well, Second Crown 16, verse 13. Uh, Asa slept with his fathers. I mean, he died. He died. Now, had, would he have died? Had he trusted in Yah for this and said, heal me, please. Heal me. I believe you can do it. I should have trusted you in the matter of Basha. I believe he would have been here, but you know, hey, he didn't believe, he didn't trust, he didn't, he, he had another test. Y'all gave him another one to say, okay, listen, I'm going to disease his feet. And, you know, for people who think y'all won't do these things, man, you know, you, you just got to look at the word. He will bring things upon you so you can trust him. This is an exercise, what it is. And it may take years of trust, but that, that means nothing to y'all. We might feel it, you know, in that sense, but we're supposed to. Years of trust. I know you're going to fix this. I know you're going to heal this. I know you're going to. And that's what you do. Uh, and y'all will come in. He'll lead and guide you along the way. Sometimes he'll give you some relief from things. It's not a fix, but it's relief while you wait on his fix. Um, that's why we have to, you know, pray for guidance and understand that he can do this for us. And, you know, you might want something or going through something now and uh, he'll turn the whole thing around a year or two. Or faster, but you have to wait and be willing to wait. Sometimes it may seem like it's going to be a long time, but just your willingness to wait will speed that timeline up, and <laughs> you get it before you know it. 
It's what's going on in you. Where are you? Is your heart perfect towards y'all? Because he's searching, okay? This is very important uh, and, and something that we cannot um, slack on. And look, he had a good going out. He buried him in his own tomb and, you know, they laid him in bed, filled with spices. Okay, that's great, but it's not doing him any good, right? So it's very important that we see this. It wasn't many scriptures here, but it was enough, hopefully, to bring the point home that Yah is searching. He wants to show himself strong. What are we doing? How's our heart set? How's our mindset? You know, how's our spirit set? Because, you know, we always going to face things. But understand, we didn't write this day. Um, we didn't. You didn't wake yourself up. And now you want to sit up here and try to fix something you didn't even create. That y'all put in in the mix for you, so he can come through. Um, you have to let him do it. Uh, you have to trust him. You don't care what it look like. So he is building that city. Oh man, with that city get built, we ain't gonna be able to get no food in and out. We ain't gonna be able to move. Don't look at that. Just say, y'all, hey, destroy this city. Stop the building of this city and help me. Give me that city. Once he's done with it, you see that kind of prayer. Um, and you know what that city is. Somebody might be building something against you right now. Uh, you know, symbolically. They're trying to stop you. Sometimes you know about it. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> but y'all, hey, you got to look at what happened with, with Haman. Y'all will give you Haman's house, so to speak. Um, you just have to trust. Whatever they're doing, tear it down. I mean, y'all tear it down. Turn it around. Give, blessed to be a blessed for me and my family. they purposing this thing against me. Um, and just believe that. And move how you move. Don't worry about it. Don't lose sleep over it. Don't figure out how I'm gonna get the, how I'm gonna get help on this. What I'm gonna do? I need to call call the man. I need to call the woman. I need, you don't need to do anything. If you call on Yah, um, that's the only phone call you have to make. Um, and there's too many scriptures in the Bible that teaches us that that's the case. Okay, so let Yah show Himself strong because the search is on, and you need to be in the position. Uh, when he's coming uh, to show himself strong for you. Okay, hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this encourages you. As I always, say, keep reading, keep studying. Uh, show yourself approved. Until next time, hallelujah, and may Yah the blessing to his word.